Greetings, friends, in the matchless name of the Lord Jesus Christ. The purpose of this video is to show that Brother Branham's statements about 1977 were predictions only, and 1977 was not a prophecy. As we listen to Brother Branham very carefully, we can find at least three reasons why he thought the year 1977 was significant. And those three statements, along with the 21 mentions of this subject, point to the fact that this was just a prediction and not a prophecy. And of course, I could be wrong. This is my opinion based upon the quotes that I can hear, and I'm always open to correction. So I believe believers would greatly benefit from hearing all the quotes on this subject, as I've talked with different ministers recently, and I think this video would be a help to many by God's grace. And if there are any quotes about 1977 that you don't hear on this video, please share them with me, and no doubt they'll help me or enlighten me by the grace of God. Here's the outline for the video. First, we'll look at the timeline and the content of the 21 mentions Brother Branham gave about 1977. And this includes 19 times he said this was a prediction. Second, we'll look at the three reasons why Brother Branham thought 1977 was divinely inspired, as he said in the Church Age book. And of course, there could be more reasons, but I found three. And lastly, we'll refute the two incorrect explanations about 1977. The timeline of all 21 mentions about 1977. The first three mentions of 1977 were in the sermon Teaching on Moses from May 13th, 1956. You'll hear Brother Branham say the word predict three times and also specifically say, I don't say the Lord told me this. Let's listen to the quote. And remember, I predict that before the great total annihilation, which I don't say the Lord told me this, but I believe there'll be something happen either between now or at that time and 77, it may come to this hour. But between now and 77, I predict that either a great destruction or total annihilation of the entire earth, between now and 77, I predicted it in 19 and 33, the fourth time he mentions 1977 is in the sermon By Faith Moses, July 20th, 1958. Brother Branham again says the word predict twice in this quote, and he specifically says this is not the Lord saying this. Let's listen to the quote. And then there will come a total annihilation. The entire nation will be wiped out. And that I predict, now this is not the Lord saying this, the other about the woman and his is the Lord. But I predicted in 19 and, and 30, 33 that the world would be total annihilation before 77. I'd like to point out that this was the quote where Brother Branham predicted total annihilation in the United States with just tree stumps left before 1977. So this statement clearly proves Brother Branham was just predicting because total annihilation did not happen before 1977. There was never a time in the United States before 1977 when only tree stumps were left. It seems Brother Branham was just greatly convinced a World War III type of war was going to take place in America before 1977. And of course, that did not happen. But that's okay, Brother Branham's still a prophet. He never said, thus saith the Lord. The fifth mention is from the sermon, Condemnation by Representation, from November 13th, 1960, Brother Branham specifically said, predict. Let's listen to the quote. I remember, Lord, that's what the Lord showed. But I predict this will take place before 1977. Upon this prediction, I base because of the onrushing slot that's coming now how fast that it was moving, how long it'll take till this nation meets its place. The sixth mention is from the sermon conference from November 25th, 1960. Brother Ram said the word predict, and he specifically said not in the trance. This statement is very important as we'll see later in this video. It seems from Brother Ram's tapes, Brother Ram never had a vision about 1977. Let's listen to the quote. 
Then I turned to look and I seen the United States as a smoldering something had burned up. And down beneath there I said, not in the trance, but I predict. Remember this, I guess this is tape two. I predict that these things will take place between now, 19 and 33, and 19 and 77, which will give us 16 more years, if my prediction strikes right. The seventh mention was from the sermon, The Ephesian Church Age, from December 5th, 1960. Brother Bram said the word predict once, and he also said, not the Lord told me. So the Lord did not say anything about 1977. That was Brother Bram's own thought. Let's listen to the quote. And in 1906, the Lady of Sin Church Age set in, and I don't know when it will end. But I predict it will be done by 1977. I predict, not the Lord told me, but I predicted according to a vision that was showed me some uh, years ago that five of those things as out of the seven has already taken place about. The eighth mention is from the Fire Tear and Church Age, December 8th, 1960. Brother Brandon said the word predict. Let's listen to the quote. And I said, I seem to look like his stumps are burning. Rocks blowed out. The whole United States is looking bare, laying like as far as I could see where I was standing. And I said, I predict according to the way time is moving, it will be sometime between this year, 33 and 77. And it will have to squeeze all hard to get through there. The ninth and tenth mentions are from the sermon, The Laodicean Church Age from December 11th, 1960. Brother Branham said, predict four times in these quotes and said three important statements. He said, I don't say it will be. He said, I could miss it a hundred years. And he said, I could be wrong. The fact that he said, I could be wrong proves there was no prophecy related to 1977 because thus saith the Lord could never be wrong. And the year 1977 was never spoken with thus saith the Lord. Let's listen to the quote. We believe that the Lady Ocean Church started in AD 1906. I predict, now remember, predict, especially you listen to the date. I don't say it will be, but predict that it will end by 1977. That the church will go completely into apostasy and she'll be ousted out of the mouth of God. And the second coming or the rapture of Christ might come anytime. And I can miss that a year. I can miss it 20 years. I can miss it 100 years. I don't know where, but I just predict that. According to a vision he showed me, and taking the time, the way it's progressing, I say it'll be sometime between 33 and 77. At, at least this great nation is going to strike a wall. That's going to blow it to bits. See? Now that's pretty close. It's awful close. I could be wrong. I'm predicting. Everybody understands? Amen. 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 In the next sermon, the 70th week of Daniel, we have the most times Brother Branham ever spoke about 1977 in one sermon. There are eight mentions of 1977 in this sermon, preached on August 6th, 1961. Brother Branham says, predict three times. And he specifically said, don't misunderstand and say, Brother Branham said Jesus will come in 1977. Let's listen to these quotes. Now, counting the time, we find that we have exactly, listen, 17 years left. And we will have the same span of time given to us as God dealing with us in the power of the Holy Spirit since AD 33 until 1977. The same span of time of 1,954 years, God deals with us the same as he did with the Jews. Amen. How about that? Hallelujah. From the first jubilee of Leviticus 25-8 in 1977 will be the 70th jubilee, making exactly 3,430 years. Amen. We got 17 years left until 77 will be the 70th jubilee since 
1933, and I predicted that there would be some great tragedy happen to this United States before or by the year of 1977. How many remembers me saying that? Look at the hand. I'll predict at the time, I don't know why I'm saying it, but I predict that that'll all happen between right now, 1933, and 1977. And not knowing it, God knows my heart. I never knowed it until yesterday that 1977 is the jubilee and exactly the same amount of time run out that you give with Israel and everything at the end. Now, I do not want anyone to go away misunderstanding this. Tape's still playing. I don't want anyone to misunderstand. Don't misunderstand now and say, Brother Branham said, Jesus will come in 1977. I never said no such no. a thing. Amen. Jesus may come today. But I have predicted that between 33 and 77, something would take place. This sermon in particular, the 70th week of Daniel, is the sermon where Brother Branham gives us two reasons why he thought 1977 was significant. And of course, I'll speak on that in the next section of this video. I also want you to notice the 70th week of Daniel was the last time on tape Brother Branham said the year 1977. That's quite significant. So that includes 1962, 63, 64, 65. The next four years of Brother Ram's ministry, he never mentioned the year 1977. And then in the book, The Exposition of the Seven Church Ages, Brother Branham mentions 1977 three times. In the Church Age book, Brother Branham said the word predict three times for a total of 21 mentions throughout his entire ministry. He specifically wrote, I did not say prophesy, and I do not prophesy. Let's listen to the quotes. The Laodicean age began around the turn of the 20th century, perhaps 1906. How long will it last? As a servant of God who has had multitudes of visions, of which none has ever failed, let me predict, I did not say prophesy, but predict, that this age will end around 1977. If you will pardon a personal note here, I base this prediction on seven major continuous visions that came to me one Sunday morning in June 1933. Based on these seven visions, along with the rapid changes which have swept the world in the last 50 years, I predict, I do not prophesy, that these visions will have all come to pass by 1977. And though many may feel that this is an irresponsible statement in view of the fact that Jesus said that no man knoweth the day nor the hour. I still maintain this prediction after 30 years because Jesus did not say no man could know the year, month, or week in which his coming was to be completed. So I repeat, I sincerely believe and maintain as a private student of the word, along with divine inspiration, that 1977 ought to terminate the world systems and usher in the millennium. The three reasons Brother Renham possibly thought 1977 was divine inspiration. Based upon the quotes I've read and listened to, it seems there are three reasons Brother Renham strongly emphasized 1977, but of course there could be more, and I'm open to receiving other quotes from viewers if I'm not aware of them. Notice I'm only using quotes from the tapes and not personal stories that are not recorded on tape. I'm using Brother Ram's recorded words only. Before sharing these three reasons, I must point out two truths about the 1977 prediction that many fail to understand. First, Brother Ram said he did not know why he said 1977 after he first received the seven major visions of 1933. This means Brother Ram did not have a vision about 1977, for if he did, he would have known why he made a 1977 prediction. He specifically says, I don't know why I'm saying it. So Brother Ram didn't seem to know why he said 1977. Let's listen to the quote. I said, the way progress, I got back to one of the wall and run to the other in the wall. I said, the way progress is going on, I'll predict at the time, I don't know why I'm saying it, but I predict that that'll all happen between right now, 1933 and 1977. Secondly, 1977 was not in the trance wherein he saw the seven major visions. This quote proves again that the 1977 prediction was not part of any vision from the Lord Jesus. 
Let's listen to the quote and notice he said, not in the trance. Then I turned to look and I seen the United States as a smoldering something had burned up. And down beneath there I said, not in the trance, but I predict. Remember this, I guess this is tape two. I predict that these things will take place between now, 19 and 33, and 19 and 77. So we conclude Brother Branham never had any visions, at least recorded on tape, related to the 1977 prediction. Reason number one why Brother Branham emphasized 1977. Brother Branham seemed to think that Jews and Gentiles would have the same amount of time to receive their covenants. In the quote you'll soon hear from the 70th week of Daniel, Brother Branham says that Jews and Gentiles each got 1,954 years to receive the covenants from God. Brother Branham said from the time God gave the covenant to Abraham in Genesis 12, verse 3, until the time of Jesus' rejection in A.D. 33, he said that time was 1,954 years. And then Brother Branham said from 33 A.D. to 1977 would be 1,954 years. Now, of course, if you do the math, 1,977 or 1977 minus 33 or A.D. 33 is 1944. So it seems Brother Ram was 10 years off in this calculation. So this miscalculation again shows how this 1977 prediction was just that. It was a human prediction. And of course, if I've done anything wrong on my math or anything, please let me know. I'm always open to correction. Let's listen to the quotes. A striking statement. From the time God made the promise to Abraham, don't miss this, from the time God made the promise to Abraham, Genesis 12, 3, to the time of Christ being rejected in A.D. 33 by the Jews, according to Galatians 3, 16 and 17, and according to Ursher's, U-S-H-E-R-S, Ursher's chronology of the Hebrews, the power of God was with the Jews exactly 1,954 years. God dealt with the Jews 1954 years according to the chronology of the Jews and according to Galatians 3 16 and 17 I got many more scriptures but just give that then after they rejected Christ he turned to the Gentiles to take a people for his name you want a scripture on that the place Acts 15 14 now Counting the time, we find that we have exactly, listen, 17 years left, and we will have the same span of time given to us as God dealing with us in the power of the Holy Spirit since AD 33 until 1977, the same span of time of 1954 years, God deals with us the same as he did with the Jews. Amen. How about that? Hallelujah. Reason number two. Brother Branham thought 1977 was the time God would return to the Jews because it was supposedly 3,430 years since the first Jewish Jubilee. In the same sermon, the 70th week of Daniel, Brother Branham said the first Jubilee took place at about 1453 B.C., and this was spoken of in the Bible in Leviticus 25, verse 8. And so, if you do the math, 70 jubilees would be 70 times 49, or 3,430 years. And if you add the years from 1,453 B.C. to 1977, that matches the 3,430 years that it would take to cover 70 jubilees. So, in other words, Brother Brandon was saying, God had to return to the Jews after the 70th Jubilee. And of course, that was Brother Ram's prediction. That did not come to pass. The Jews are still blinded to the new covenant. But it shows again how Brother Ram was trying to use math and historical biblical dates to predict the year that the Lord might return. Brother Branham may have been using math and dates because, as you'll recall, Brother Branham said in the Church Age book that Jesus did not say we cannot know the year, month, or week of his coming. 
And notice also in this next quote, you'll hear Brother Branham say he learned about the 70th Jubilee from a historian named Paul Boyd, which again shows Brother Branham was not a plagiarist. Let's listen to the quotes. Now, mark down in your book a little scripture here I want to give you. Leviticus 25, beginning with the 8th verse. God called the Jubilee every 49th year. The 50th year was the Jubilee. We know that. Yeah. We understand that. From the first Jubilee of Leviticus 25, 8, and 1977 will be the 70th Jubilee, making exactly 3,430 years. Amen. Amen. Jubilee means the boy up. Yeah. Release. Yeah. Oh, we're watching for the coming of that glad millennium day. When our blessed Lord shall come and catch his waiting bride away. Oh, the world is growing, crying for that day of sweet release when our Savior shall come back to earth again. Did you get that? God has dealt with us at exactly the same amount of time that he dealt with the Jews from the time he gave Abraham the promise until the rejecting of the Messiah in AD 33 was 1954 years and now we have 17 years left we had about 1930 something years we got 17 years left until 77 will be the 70th jubilee since the beginning of jubilees Amen. and what will it be oh brother watch close now don't miss it it'll be the jubilee of the going up of the Gentile bride and the return of Christ to the Jews. Amen. When they go out of bondage. Amen. Amen. Don't Hallelujah. you see? Yes. From all the world, they've gathered there for that day. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, my. See where we're at? We don't know what time it might happen. Oh, brother. We're at the end time. Now, listen. To you old timers here in the, in the church, it's been here for a long time. I want you to notice something. I never learned this until yesterday. I picked it up from historian Paul Boyd. And um, then and I traced it back through the scriptures, picked up these other dates here and so forth, and got it and run it, traced it through. Before moving on to the third reason, I also want to show a quote from the end of this sermon, the 70th week of Daniel, wherein Brother Branham said this 1977 prediction was a scriptural teaching. He said, just absolutely, perfectly scriptural proof. So based upon these two numerical predictions that pointed Brother Branham to the year 1977, although the first one was off by 10 years, Brother Branham made it sound like it was a vindicated Bible-based teaching. As you listen to the quote, notice Brother Branham is convinced the end is so close. He says, we may never live to get back again tonight to the evening service there on August 6, 1961. So again, this shows how a Bible-based prophet like Brother Branham could believe something was just absolutely, perfectly scriptural and be wrong. But that's okay. Brother Branham said, I could be wrong about the 1977 prediction. He said that numerous times. Let's listen to the quotes. Little children, we never know. We may never live to get back again tonight. We may never live to see one another again. I don't know. But the end is so near. The end is so close. Here's the scripture. There's this absolutely, perfectly scriptural proof. Now, if there's something you didn't understand, write me a note. Let me know about it. See? Say something. Some of you brethren out there on the tapes and the other parts. If there's something I can help you, let me know. Reason number three. Brother Branham thought no democracy had ever lasted 200 years and therefore thought the United States of America could not last 200 years after the year of its inception 1776, which 200 years later would have been 1976. In this masterpiece quote from July 5th, 1964, Brother Branham said, no democracy had lasted 200 years. I haven't studied this extensively, but it seems accurate as the ancient Greeks had a democratic rule for almost two centuries, according to the Encyclopedia Britannica website, and the ancient Greek golden age of democracy was around 430 BC. But again, we can clearly see how Brother Ram felt the nation would not survive or live to see 1977. 
Let's listen to the quote. As we see the days darkening, as we see the shadows falling, when I predict it's just a few more turns of the sun, this nation's gone. Do you know yesterday, 4th of July, when Thomas Jefferson had to sign the Declaration of Independence, him and the other uh, board that was with him, and the Liberty Bell rang, and we was declared an independence as a nation. According to history, there has never been a democracy at any time last over 200 years. And that was 1776, July the 4th. And we're just 11 years left. Will it make it? No. Can't. 11 years. And if it does, it'll break all history. So I believe these are the three reasons why Brother Branham wrote his prediction about 1977 was with divine inspiration in the Church Age book. First, he thought the Jews and Gentiles would have the same number of years to receive their covenants, 1,954. He thought 1977 would be the 70th Jubilee for the Jews and God would return to the Jews. And third, the historical fact that no democracy had lasted over 200 years. Remember, Brother Branham felt he had Bible verses to support his prediction, namely the historical dates related to Abraham in Genesis 12, verse 3, Galatians 3, verses 16 and 17, and Acts 15, verse 14. And he had scripture for the historical dates related to Moses and the Jubilee in Leviticus 25, verse 8. And then thirdly, he had the historical dates related to the ancient Greeks. Before finishing this section, I want to share one more Brother Branham quote related to predicting the end of time. In November 1963, Brother Branham said our calendar said there were 36 more years for the work to be over. He was finishing his sermon, The Three Kinds of Believers, trying to get every person to be saved, and said the end would be either 36 years, 15 years, or 20 years, which would be 1999, 1978, and 1983, respectively. It's clear Brother Brandon was doing everything in his power to influence young and old to repent and be saved before it was their time to die and meet God or before the Great Tribulation period set in. Brother Branham lived in a tumultuous time politically, as he mentioned atom bombs and President Kennedy's assassination in this quote. He even prayed and asked God for forgiveness for his mistakes asking for strength to make the gospel more plain to the hearers. Let's listen to the quote. Though he may not give me the, the power to walk like Enoch and not have to die, but just take an afternoon's walk and go home with him. But God, I do believe that it will happen because I know there's to be a rapture in the last day and the work's to be cut short. And Father, so says our calendar, 36 more years and the work will be over. And you'll have to come sometime within that, or there'll be no flesh saved. And then we're told by the chronologists and the, and the people who search such things that we are absolutely advanced many, many years from that, many years on up. They're telling us by the calendars that we're way up further than that. Maybe there's only 15 or 20 years left. I don't know further. But I know even according to our calendar, we're almost there. I see where there cannot be any hope left, Lord. There's coming a... If they ever start turning those bombs loose on each other, Lord, there, there, there'll be no battlefront. They'll, they will destroy one another. Lord is hanging there. And yet the Bible says the whole heavens and earth will be on fire. God, I see the hour appearing. I think of the assassination of the president. And then see that other evil man come in without letting the man have a trial and shot him down in cold-blooded murder. Oh, God, one's as guilty as the other. They have no right to do that. Evil. And our own nation supposed to be a Christian nation. What a poor example we are, Lord, of Christians. Forgive us, Lord, of our sins. Help us, oh, God, especially your church. I, I'm only trying to do this because I feel your commission is for me to do it. So, Father, here I am doing the best I can. Forgive my feeble mistakes, Lord. 
I pray that you will grant to me strength and I'll be able to make it more plainer to the people. Refuting two incorrect explanations about 1977. I've heard numerous interpretations about the 1977 prediction, but two of them I've heard most often, and I believe both are clearly wrong. First, some say the 1977 statement was a prophecy or divinely inspired, and that the world literally changed in 1977, both naturally and spiritually. This is the more widely held belief of the two beliefs. So was 1977 a prophecy? I believe the answer is no. 19 times Brother Branham said it was a prediction. Plus he said the following quotes about this prediction. Quote, I don't say the Lord told me this. This is not the Lord saying this, not in the trance, not the Lord told me. I don't say it will be. I could miss it a hundred years. I could be wrong. Don't misunderstand and say, Brother Branham said Jesus will come in 1977. I did not say prophesy. I do not prophesy. End quote. Again, Brother Branham said, I could be wrong about 1977. Prophecy spoken with thus saith the Lord could never be wrong. So this again proves 1977 was just a human prediction and not a prophecy. Also, did the world literally change in 1977? Well, in one sense it did. But in another sense, there was no significant change that was unlike any other year. What I mean by that is that I think it's safe to say the world changes every year, with 2020 being a prime example of how quickly the world can change, especially regarding the shutdowns and the mask and vaccine mandates. So I don't think the position is valid to say 1977 changed the world unlike any other year. Some have said that 1977 changed the world because the Apple Company began and also Elvis died, and a few other reasons. But the same can be said for other years. What about 1973 when abortion became legal? Never before had millions upon millions of babies been aborted. Some would say that was a more drastic change than anything that happened in 1977. Didn't the murder of millions upon millions of unborn children change the world for the worse? Didn't the world change when the Amazon Company began in 1994? Without a doubt, didn't the world change in 2015 when the Supreme Court ruled homosexual marriages were legal? Of course, that was a change for the worse. But yet, wasn't it a more significant change than Elvis dying or the beginning of the Apple Company? Also, people have asked me, what about the supposed vision Brother Branham had about 1977? It's been spread abroad about a supposed vision Brother Branham had of 1977, and in his vision, it was pitch black after or around 1977. But friends, there is no quote from Brother Branham on tape about this supposed vision. Some who hold this position do not seem to realize what they're doing. They're actually contradicting themselves. For example, some of these same believers say, say what the tapes say. Yet those who say, say what the tapes say, are in the case of 1977 saying, don't say what the tapes say, related to 1977, say what an unknown or unnamed brother said about a supposed conversation he had with Brother Branham. In my humble opinion, I cannot support this blatant contradiction. How can we say, say what the tapes say in some cases, and in other cases, we can say, don't say what the tapes say, say what this brother from another country said. And then there's a second contradiction as well. Some of these same believers say, you can't correct a prophet. And yet they are correcting Brother Branham's words that clearly state 1977 was not a prophecy and just a prediction, and that Brother Branham did not know why he said 1977. So again, they say you can't correct a prophet, but when they speak about 1977, they are trying to correct a prophet. They're trying to make his words a prophecy, yet Brother Branham clearly said they were just a prediction. Remember, I've already shown in this video the three reasons Brother Branham gave for believing 1977 was an end date for the United States of America. And two of them come from the 1961 sermon, Daniel's 70th week, wherein Brother Branham explained by dates and calendars why he was amazed the dates of both Abraham's covenant and Moses' jubilee years seem to work out to 1977. The second less held view is that the 1977 statement was a prophecy and we are now in the millennium due to the church age book quote about ushering in the millennium, as you heard earlier. This is the less held view. Friends, Brother Branham clearly said the Laodicean church age goes on until the rapture of the church. 
Let's listen to the quotes. Brother Brandon, have you made statements recently concerning that church age has ended, Lady Osea? No, I never said it's ended. If I did, you misunderstood it. I said it wrong. It is, this is the last church age. It's the end of church ages, the Lady Osea. It hasn't ended. When it ends, the church is gone. So as long as the church is here, it hasn't ended. Think. The church age ended and has blacked out. The bride is called. We have already entered into the tribulation period. No, no, no. You, I wish I could just have more time on that. Think. See, the bride, when she's taken from the church, then the church age will cease. Lady Osea goes into chaos. The bride goes to glory, and the tribulation period sets in upon the sleeping virgin for three and a half years while Israel is getting its prophecy. Then tribulation sets in upon Israel, and then comes the battle of Armageddon, which destroys all things, and then the bride returns back with the groom for a thousand years the millennium reign after that comes a white throne judgment after that comes the new heavens and new earth and the new city coming down from god out of heaven eternity and time blends together also the rapture is the time of the church ages being capped off with christ coming brother brandon may have taught the capstone was already put on but then he changed it in 1961 brother bram taught the capstone was the rapture Here's the quote. And Daniel said he watched this Gentile age until a stone come out of the mountain that wasn't cut with hands. They have never put a capstone on that pyramid. It wasn't cut by man's hands. It's God's hands that cut the stone. You see it? And what did it do? It hit the image right smack in the feet. And broke it to pieces. Grounded in a powder. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. What happened at that time, the coming of that stone? Up went the church into glory Amen. at the rapture, because it ended the Gentile dispensation. Cotton ended up the coming of that stone. And then in 1965, Brother Bram said the capstone had still not come. Let's listen to the quote. receive the bride into himself which the woman is took from the man a part of the man next if 1977 was the end of the united states that means daniel's 70th week began in 1977 so that means the first half of the seven year tribulation period lasted from 1977 to the middle of 1980 and then the second half of it lasted from the middle of 1980 to 1984 so does this mean we're now in the 38th year of the millennium? The answer is no. Also, if we're in the millennium, where is the video proof of the two Jewish prophets preaching during the last three and a half years of the Great Tribulation period, which would have been from 1977 to the middle of 1980? Where's the video proof they turned water to blood and ceased the rain for three and a half years? And the proof that they died, resurrected, and went in the rapture to heaven, as Revelation 11 declares. Of course, there is no proof because this never happened yet. In this next quote, Brother Branham said, A thousand years of peace has not happened. And this was spoken in 1964. Brother Branham said, There would be no sin during the millennium. Anyone who believes we're in the millennium is totally deceived because they sin every single day. And Brother Branham and the Bible say there will be no sin in the millennium because Satan is bound in the bottomless pit and he cannot influence people to sin. Let's listen to the quote. So sin will still be on the other side of millennium, but not doing the millennium. See, doing millennium is peace. See, but sin will be dealt with the other side of millennium, and then time fades out. And now the opening of the seven seals that was given by the Holy Spirit, the seven seals only was to make known what had been left off in the dispensations behind us. Also, notice in the next quote from 1953, Brother Branham says, We'll reign here with Christ for a thousand years. If we're in the millennium, where is Brother Branham currently physically ruling and reigning here on the earth? 
The answer is he's not because we're not in the millennium. Let's listen to the quote. And death has done been, the penalty of death has been taken off, and now we just go right into his presence and someday return back and be made immortal and live on this earth. A thousand years with Jesus Christ. Amen. I believe that. I'm strictly a millennialist. I believe in the millennium. I believe all these Hebrew prophets and through the ages spoke on the golden age of millennium coming, and I believe we're going to have it. And we'll reign here with him a thousand years. In closing, friends, I hope this video has been a blessing. Over the years, I've been asked about the 1977 prediction many, many times. I've even preached on it a number of times. But I felt led this was the time to really study it out as deeply as I ever had. And I trust by the grace of God that you can now see that it was a prediction and not a prophecy. Of course, you and I are going to come across people we may disagree with. So the main thing to do is have Christian love. Brother Random said we ought to be able to disagree bitterly with someone, but then at the end of the conversation, think as much of them as Christ thinks about them, which Christ thinks a lot about them because Christ died for them. So I'm going to end the video with that quote. What this world really lacks, what the churches lack, and what the message lacks, in many cases, is divine love and also brotherly kindness. Jesus said, because iniquity shall abound, the love of God shall wax cold. So if there is one place you should find the real love of God, it should be in the true bride of Jesus Christ. The true bride, no doubt, agrees about many things in the scripture. There may be a few things here or there that the members don't agree about, but even in disagreeing, they should express the love of Jesus Christ one toward another. Let's listen to the quote. You don't want to get like uh, Oswald. See, if you can't disagree with a man and things, then shake his hand and still have the same feelings towards you, then there's something wrong with you. If I can't disagree with a man bitterly from one side to the other and still think as much of him as, as Christ would, then there's something wrong with my spirit. I haven't the spirit of Christ. See? If he says, well, Brother Branham, I believe that you are teaching us this. All right, brother, let's come together to reason, you and I. We'll take it ourselves. We'll go over here in the room to ourselves. We'll reason it out. And he just cuts me to pieces. And I have to say things back to him. If in my heart I can't feel the same about him and he's still my brother, and I'm trying to help him, then I'll never help him. There's no way for me to help him. If I don't love him, what's use of going over there? Tell him in the first place first, brother, I don't love you, and let me get that out of my heart right here before we go in there, because I can't help you until I love you. If you have any questions, concerns, or testimonies about this video, please contact me. God bless you, and may Jesus Christ be the desire of your heart.